So as you guys, oh whoa. So as you guys can tell from the from the you know where the battery tray used to be, it's kind of rusty. They don't paint it from the factory, so it doesn't look good. Obviously, we're not painting the whole engine bay, but what I think I'm gonna go ahead and do is just go ahead and clean it. At least give it a quick little coat of black paint. I'm not gonna do gloss. I'm just gonna do some flat black. It, it probably won't. It honestly might blend in quite well. And we also want to at least get some paint on the edges where I cut for the hole. We'll give the whole coat around the edge with some, some vacuum line. It'll look really nice. And that will seal the deal. This is actually the regulator I had in my car before I had the Sard one. Uh, so this is just what I had laying around. He didn't have one, so he decided to pick it up. That's what we're going to use for now. It does just fine, to be honest. So that's going to be mounted there on the firewall. So yeah, already got the holes drilled out. So just, you know, mount it up. Be. Just gotta get him one of those little gauges, you know. So for those of you that are wondering how to, I guess, plumb in a fuel pressure regulator, let me tell you. So. Real simple, always you want to have it on the return side of your rail. So not on the feed side, on the return side. Reason being, you know, if there's a blockage or something that happens pre-rail or inside of the rail, it won't show up on the gauge if you put it before the rails. That's why you put it on the return side so the gas that goes back into the tank, it reads that pressure. So the line that comes in off the side, that's going to be the one coming from your rail. Rail goes into the side, line coming down from the bottom, as you guys can see I already have it plumbed in, goes back into the return line, that goes back into the gas tank. So super easy. We also have a little vacuum port. That is gonna wanna see vacuum from the intake manifold. So we're gonna go ahead and plumb that in. We're probably gonna have to run a little T-junction. I have one available port left. We're gonna need more than that, so. So since the paint is pretty much dry and don't worry, that, oh wait, hang on, that's not me, that's just dirty. I just painted this bottom part. Looks a whole lot better than when it did before, so pretty pumped about that. Obviously we don't want sharp edges to be able to touch and come in contact with the intercooler piping because eventually that will rub through. So what we do is we take a bit of vacuum line, or this in specific, hopefully my camera will get in, get in on this here. This is actually just some windshield wiper hose, you know, windshield wiper tube type deal you can get from AutoZone. I believe this is 5 30 seconds. Doesn't really matter. Just get the small one. Go ahead and cut it right in half. And then you're going to go ahead and line this, boom, right around your hole.
There you guys have it. Nice and clean now. So I made a parts run and got a bunch of little things that we needed. Just went ahead and bought actually just a bit of two inch exhaust pipe from AutoZone just to kind of complete that little section right there. Also went ahead and got a little fitting for our oil drain so we'll go ahead and plumb that in. The one that was in there was a little bit too small for my taste. I don't think it would be as efficient as it could be for an oil drain. So I'm going to go ahead and swap that out. Uh, obviously we you know, I went ahead and cut the hole there, three and a half inch, so that gives us a nice amount of clearance. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that in the vacuum line to make it nice and neat. Now that I think about it, I forgot to buy vacuum line. That's one thing we needed, so I'll have to go and get that another day. But so for any of you guys that are curious as to how I actually cut that with the with the hole saw, as you guys you know saw, it was a little bit tricky. You couldn't do it without, you know, a, a pilot hole. So what I did here is I just riveted the actual piece that I cut out from that side, riveted it, that sounds kind of strange, but I riveted it to the actual, you know, engine bay down there, and then went ahead and used the center hole here as a pilot, and then just cut around it. So then as you guys can see, took out both pieces. Bada boom. <laughs> <laughs>